Welcome to Heritage Month and the start of spring. May this new season be filled with an abundance of opportunities, breakthroughs, beautiful moments and lots of love. Today's service is all about celebrating and honoring partnership and friendship through the unity of being diverse. Hello dear sisters and dear brothers in Cape Town. My name is Elke and I live in Rheinheim in the deanery Vorderer Odenwald. I will send you greetings for the Partnership Sunday and I want to greet you with one verse from Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. While the earth goes on, seed time and the getting in of the grain, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will not come to an end. In the back you see the apples, you see the grass, you see the bees and the potato field which we plant with a, in a biological way. And you see the landscape from our deanery. So, I will send you good wishes and good luck for all the decisions you have to decide in the next weeks and the next days. And maybe one time we will see each other in our deanery or in Cape Town. But at the moment we stay at home and we pray for each other and we think on each other. So, goodbye. Moweni, guten Tag, good day. Come, let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the joy of tasting this new day. I thank you for my brothers and sisters all over the world. Their presence in spirit and love is an encouragement and support. Father, in these turbulent times, thank you that you are our rock. Thank you that your love unites us in partnership. Allow your children to bless each other with daily praise, especially during this global pandemic. Be with those who have lost dear ones, my God. Forgive us our transgressions and fill us with your unfailing love. Empower us to live in hope and keep our eyes fixed on you. To you we bestow all our praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The police are being funded. My daughter, my mama, my father, my ulucha, my son in school. The family goes to Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, say six September 2020. Amazon. I'm sorry. So, I'm going to miss you. 21, chapter 7. 
Let us read Nico First Thessalonica chapter five verse twenty three. We over we are kukutina e bubini bonke. We are kumalisa um perfum lowako. Elisbini. Banga ke utiko wok o lungo kwake, anga ningalisa ni pele lise gile. Uti ukabelele owen umoya nom perfum lunom zimba. Utuinwe gogunge naku. Ekunge na kustoleka. Ekufike ni kwenkosi yetu. Yesu Christu. Amen. Kela sifuma ni mtanda zoho na mtanje. Sibule langosi ukumwali swangu uwe ngoko mpefumlo na ngoko mzimba. Makushale kunja alo getiko yetu. Amen. Izwile vegi ilo na sifuma na Kumateu chapter 25 verse 40 lifunde kangol shobo. Ineni nditikuni, eku beni nenje njalo na kumye waba bazalo anebamu. Banga bona banyo nane, nenje njalo na kumu. Nkosi yangi ngasikele lukufunda kwa lama zungu kukutebe nguna pakate. Amen. I consider that our oppression and sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Romans 8, verses 18 and 19. For months, all our earth has been united in pandemic panic. As Christians, we have been uniting in prayer, Summoned in suffering solidarity. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. We have been shown a network which is to compensate for all social distancing, a healing hope, a vision that can go viral. The amazing potential of the most experienced network of all earth the church as the first root of God's kingdom, the growing of Christ's body to renew all our earth. All our earth has recognized that we are under threat of facing the same flood. COVID and climate crisis, local and global injustice, and the suffering solidarity, the human hope, God's gospel may start with our tiny tasks, but as we stop distancing, it will go viral and reveal what all creation is waiting for. God's new beginning among us, able to infect all earth, from Tata to Cape Town, from Cape Town to the Odenwald. So using all the new media coming up, we are able to unite for the future to begin now, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children's, children of God to be revealed.
morning. The reading for today is taken from Acts chapter 6 verses 1 till 7 and it reads as follows. The seven helpers. Some time later, as the number of disciples kept growing, there was a quarrel between the Greek-speaking Jews and the native Jews. The Greek-speaking Jews claimed that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of funds. So the twelve apostles called the whole group of believers together and said, It is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances. So then, brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and we will put them in charge of this matter. We ourselves, then, will give our full time to prayer and the work of preaching. The whole group was pleased with the apostles' proposal, so they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a Gentile from Antioch who had earlier been converted to Judaism. The group presented them to the apostles, who prayed and placed their hands on them. And so the word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem grew larger and larger, and a great number of priests accepted the faith. This is the word of the Lord. I greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Uh, when we read the description of the early church, the miracles, the sharing and generosity, the fellowship, we may wish we could be part of that perfect church. In reality, the early church had problems just as we do today. No church will ever be perfect until Christ and his followers are united. Then the church will be perfect. There was an internal problem, problem developed in the early church between the Hebrew-speaking Christians and the Greek-speaking Christians. To correct the situation, the apostles put seven men, Greek-speaking Christians, men, Christian men, to be in charge. And that solved the problem. And it also allowed the apostles to keep their focus on teaching and preaching the good news about Jesus Christ. As the church increased in size, so did its needs. The, the church increased every day, then the needs also increased. Each person in the church has a vital part to play in the life of the church. If you are in a position of leadership and find yourself overwhelmed by responsibilities, determine your God-given gift and prioritize. And then find other people to help with other things in the church because you can't do everything because you are a leader. You have to find other people to help you with other things. Even if you are not in a leadership, but God gave you a gift, meaning that you have to use that gift for the work of the Lord in the house of the Lord. In various areas of the church's ministry, use your gift. Offer those gifts in, service of, in, serv in servicing God. The requirements for the men who were to handle this food program because it showed that there was a, it was a food program that they had that where there was a problem developed, and they were to be well respected and full of Holy Spirit and have wisdom because it's important when you handle a situation that you must have a full Holy Spirit and you must have wisdom 
And you must be a respected person. To be a respected person, you have to respect yourself for other people to respect you. Those are the requirements that they were having, these people who were elected to, to, to take over in this food program. People who carry heavy responsibilities and work closely with other people should have these qualities. We must, we must look for spiritually mature because it's important to be spiritually matured. We must look for spiritually matured and wise men and women to lead our churches. The apostles' priority, priorities were, was correct, was very, very, very correct. They prioritized something that was correct. The ministry of the word should never be neglected because of the administrative burden, because it shows that they had an administration burden, but and then they neglected the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the word in, 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 the, in their ministry. Pastor, the ministers should not try to do everything on their own. Instead, the, the work of the church should be shared out amongst us, its members. The spiritual leadership is a, is, a, is, a, is a serious business in the church and it must not be taken for granted or taken lightly by the church or by the leaders. Jesus told the apostles that you have to be witnessed first in Jerusalem before you are being witnessed outside. It is important to be witnessed inside where we are before other people witness us. The word of God spread like nipples and once formed, once pawned, where from a single center each each wave touches the next is and, and spread to and in other places and it spreads wider when one touches the other one touches also and it goes and spreads wider 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 and further the good news still spread like that even today you preach today somebody took the word what you preach and spread it to somebody else and it reaches somebody else in another place you don't have to change the world single-handedly we need to work together in unity in order to change things in order for our church to develop in order to to be in Christ, we need to be in unity and we need to be spiritually matured and have full Holy Spirit. It is enough just to be part of the wave, touching those around you who in turn they will touch those next to them until until all felt the movement of the wave. This thing, it goes around. You touch one another, you touch another one and another. That is how, the, how to spread the word of the Lord. That is how the gospel must be spread. Don't ever feel that your part is insignificant and unimportant in the house of the Lord. Paul said, we are parts of the body and for the body to to, to survive, it needs all parts, meaning that one part needs another part for the survival and benefit of the body. So in Christ, we must be united. We, we have to be united with the Holy Spirit, united with Christ. We don't do that alone. We can be united as members, but we also have to be united with Christ so that we will become a perfect church when we are united in Christ and we, are, we have to be spiritually matured in order to, to be united in, in Christ so that we will be one in Christ. We need to focus in preaching and teaching the word of God. The spiritual leadership is so important in the church. We need to be fully matured. May the good Lord bless us and keep us and unite us as the, as the church of God. It doesn't matter whether you are in Mtata, in, in Cape Town South or in Germany, but we, are, we have to be united. We are united in one by Christ in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Reicht euch die Hand und sagt Gute Nacht. Hat doch das Tagwerk euch müd gemacht. Hüllt euch drin ein als Schutz für die Nacht. Da Gottes Reicht euch die Hand, dich, dir und du mir. Sagt Gottes Frieden, er sei mit dir. Hüllt euch drin ein als Schutz für die Nacht, da Gottes Engel war. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the great I am, our Redeemer, our Savior, and everything that we need on life's journey. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have prayed for the unity amongst all believers and even of all those who don't belong to your clan of believers yet. We thank you, dear Lord, that through your sacrifice, we can be called brothers and sisters. Thank you, dear Lord, that Cape Town South District can have a local or local or national partnership with our brothers and sisters in Umtata. Thank you, dear Lord, that they can also have a partnership with the brothers and sisters in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Germany. Thank you that through these partnerships we can listen to one another, we can share with one another, we can share with one another how we believe, what we believe, and through our sharing we can build up one another. Thank you, dear Lord, for programs like reading the Bible through the eyes of another where we, through our different circumstances, can share our experience and how Scripture influences our lives and how Scripture, dear Lord, encourages us on life's journey. We want to pray, dear Lord, that you bless these partnerships so that we can always grow through these partnerships and our relationship with one another. We believe, dear Lord, that without ecumenical ties, a church can never or cannot exist in this time and era. For that reason, dear Lord, we want to pray that you open us, our minds and hearts, for the unity of all believers. Help us, dear Lord, that we can look one another in the eye and share our faith with one another. You know, dear Lord, the challenges that we are facing in our personal lives, but also in our lives as believers, as churches. And therefore, dear Lord, we want to pray that through your mercy, you will hear our silent prayer and guide us through times that this times that we are facing. Be with us, dear Lord, and guide us all as we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, with much thanksgiving. Amen. The benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen. We hope that today's service is a testament that is as diverse and unique as we are. We are all in this together and there is power in unity. Please don't forget about our hashtag Vickal challenge and we look forward to seeing all your videos and connecting with you. Have a lovely day and a blessed week ahead. Love, light and healing.